Hello everyone and welcome to this breakout session on good practices uh, solving actual health care, health and care challenges with cross innovation. Uh, and I will do it with, by presenting uh, a project that we have been involved in called cross for health uh, I would like to thank you for being here. My name is Magnus Wallengren and I work as an innovation manager with an organization called uh, Innovation Skåne. Uh, located in the very south of Sweden. Um, first off, I would like to thank the conference organizers for having invited me to present on this topic. And now I think that we're ready to get started. There we go. Um, first off the agenda for today. Um, uh, I, uh, I will give a brief introduction to who we are at Innovation Skåne. Uh, I will discuss uh, how to support cross-sectorial collaboration from our point of view, um, the whys and the hows in terms of mechanism and what, uh, what component public policy and strategy has to play here. Um, I will present a few experiences that we've had thus far in the in cross-sectorial cross collaboration. Uh, I will use an example from uh, a procurement in initiative that we were involved in, uh, some policy work that's been developed in project that we've been involved in, and as well as examples of actual developed products that we've come in contact with and supported. And uh, at the end, we'll discuss a bit what comes next for us. So starting with who we are. Uh, we at Innovation Skåne, we are the regional innovation company of our owner, Region Skåne. Uh, region Skåne is the regional public health care provider in Skåne. Um, Region Skåne is not only responsible for the healthcare and the healthcare services, but also for the regional infrastructure and the transportation, regional growth, uh, tourism and culture. Um, at our site, we have a staff of about almost 50 people, of which about 30 of us are full-time employees. Most of us are what we call innovation managers in a variety of sectors, um, but covering a large range of uh, backgrounds and professions. Uh, our main office is in Lund, but we also have offices throughout the region in uh, Malmö, Helsingborg and uh, Kristianstad. We are led by two overarching goals. Uh, the first one, growth, uh, where our goal is to support the creation of a thousand jobs annually um, and supporting, and the other one supporting the improvement of future welfare services, adding, the target is adding 200 million kroners about, which is about 20 million euros uh, in value in uh, provision of healthcare services for our own or region Skåne in 2020. What we like to talk about is the so-called sweet spot between these, when, we, when we're succeeding combi combining these two targets, where the provision of public services can be improved while also supporting job creation, typically by collaborating with both public need owners and private solution providers. Examples of uh, such sweet spots will be presented both by our, in our involvement in this um, project, Cross for Health, as well as our lead in a regional innovation procurement initiative. Uh, me and our colleagues are divided in a number of different sectors where we focus our work. Uh, we focus our work on the strengths and responsibilities of region Skåne which in practice means that many of us work in health and towards the healthcare sector. This is, however, not all that we do. Um, going from the top and going clockwise, we have uh, colleagues of ours working in uh, the concept smart city and human-centric lighting. Uh, we have people working in mobility, transportation and infrastructure. Uh, we have people working in material materials namely focusing on the large uh, research centers that we have here in the southwest of Skåne. 
myself and, 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 and large number of colleagues are focusing on health tech and healthcare, but we've also got the, the, the sector food tech covered by a few colleagues of ours. Um, this is not only for background uh, bringing this up, but uh, something that we will partially be get back to as impacting our organization's potential of uh, collaborating across all these sectors. So cross-sectorial innovation, targeting health and care. Uh, what are we actually talking about and for what purposes? And what do healthcare providers potentially have to gain from these concepts? When we, when we meet clin clinicians or for that matter, strategists working for our healthcare provider, uh, these can be perceived as somewhat abstract concepts. So I wanted to start out with showing you the model that we are using for putting these concepts into words and words that make sense for them. This is not only when we meet healthcare staff, but also, of course, when we meet SMEs who are coming into contact with us and are curious about these concepts. Uh, we like to show this illustration all over how sectoral and cross-sectoral logic has moved over time. And this goes uh, obviously for all or many sectors that we cover. Um, traditionally, cluster theory was based on a very silos based sectoral logic, separated, clearly separated, and not a lot of collaboration going on. Uh, however, over time, the, these boundaries have changed and different industries have moved closer together meaning that the market logic and the perception, perception of sector boundaries have evolved over time. Uh, what happens now is that these, what we like to call white spaces are created as opportunity sectors between these traditionally based uh, industries that we had before. These white, these, uh, white spaces goes one step further and provides a meeting place, an arena for players from different backgrounds with different types of knowledge. Uh, but there is also a role for national strategies and sector specific strengths to play here. Um, the Swedish National Innovation Agency, Vinova, are structuring their funding within 17 strategic innovation programs. Uh, the structure and the ambition of these programs are key when not only defining sectors, but also when initiating cross-sectoral collaboration. Uh, already in 2011, they released a publication called White Spaces Innovation in Sweden Innovation Policy for exploring the adjacent possible with models based on the concepts from the previous slide. So, 2011, that was quite a while ago uh, now that when we look at it today, but we can see that there is not, I mean, the ambition and the theory is there, but there is not a lot of this happening in practice, not, at least not in a national context when we look at it. Um, when defining these strategic innovation programs, it is key for them to be designed in such a way that they actually promote cross-sectoral collaboration, which is much easier achieved if they are described in somewhat of an abstract form, fo focusing on what is actually what are actually the desired effects and not in terms of specific, often very technically defined subsectors limited by clear boundaries. Good examples of such innovation programs are, for instance, uh, the ones called Smart Built Environment, focusing on a digitally mature society and related technologies. Another one is Sway Life, a life science initiative, not necessarily excluding collaboration with relevant uh, tangential sectors. And um, Viable Cities, a sustainability initiative. Of course, there are other, other ones uh, lesser examples, less interest, interested in uh, promoting cross-sectoral growth and almost promoting their silos-oriented nature, 
an example of this could be the innovation program Metallic Material, which stands out as a rather technically focused one in comparison with a lot of the others. Uh, additionally, we also have the Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth, which is in charge of these smart specialization strategies. These strategies are the uh, European instrument for identifying and pushing for specific sectors on a regional level. For Sweden, this allows re each region to specify and select any number of sectors where regional strength can be perceived. Just as in the case of Innova, this needs to be done in such a way that interplay between regional strengths is more easily enabled. Uh, these sectors then go hand in hand with regional innovation and growth strategies. What we can see here, at least in Sweden, is that in these strategies, there, there is unfortunately rarely discussed collaboration over sector boundaries, even though in a European context, these so-called emerging markets or white spaces offer significant potential for growth by unlocking innovative solutions for existing markets. Uh, identify re regional growth sectors, for instance, for us here in Skåne would be uh, tech, life science, the food industry, advanced material, materials based on research centers and smart sustainable cities. As we can see, both theory and policy preparations have been, be, have been in place for quite a while now. Uh, it is, however, the actual opportunities and context that's been missing. Actually interlinking these sectors have been poorly implemented and in general received rather little, fo rather little focus. Additionally, we find that these market silos can be much more challenged in our national context. And I will in this presentation describe such an opportunity promoting cross-sectoral innovation through our involvement in this uh, cross for health project. Uh, there are a range of factors affecting crossover collaborations. Um, there are certainly drivers such as what, what is often mentioned uh, digitalization drivers such as uh, public procurement practices, the, uh, uh, the matter of challenging traditional procurement practices and focusing more on defining requirements based on effects and end user experience, not only on short term capabilities and technical specifications. Another driver is uh, this, uh, concepts of service innovation increasing the understanding of end users and their actual needs. For us, we speak of the combination of these two latter factors as increasing cap capabilities of challenge-driven innovation. By using end user co-creation concepts with actual procurements for making sure that the new innovative solutions are actually implemented and used. Additionally, there are identified barriers. Uh, speaking now in the context of the healthcare sector, there are uh, regulatory requirements, especially due to risk management purposes, health and care products are strictly regulated. And engaging, engaging healthcare challenges from other sectors might be challenging, at least at first since solution owners need to understand the rules, law and laws regulating market entry. Uh, further on, we've got development dynamics. Uh, in general, the healthcare sector is perceived as somewhat more traditional, hierarchical even, compared to other sectors. Titles actually matter, and they matter quite a lot when attempting to gain traction as an external actor or company coming in from the outside. Uh, concluding, there is uh, the matter of business models in the healthcare sector, which is largely driven by um, publicly mandated reimbursement schemes, which are these schemes are complex. And for public healthcare providers, it is often the case that it's not the care contact delivering the service who receive the actual reimbursement from the patient. 
meaning that these care contexts have less incentive to develop service services and increase their innovation capacity. Not only that, but the setup of reimbursement schemes may vary, vary by a lot, not only between countries, but also from region to region. This is a very complex matter to understand for, for external actors or SMEs. There are actions to address these factors and try to break these barriers. Uh, there is increased industry and user dialogue, a better understanding of actual needs and the other way around. And users, on the other hand, better understand what is actually offered on the markets. Uh, formalized clinic industry collaborations. These type of collaborations can easily be structured around so-called test beds or living labs accessed and arranged by healthcare providers. Uh, these test beds are structures offering a type of safe space for collaborating within strict boundaries such as uh, and be able, being able to address such concerns as product regulations and ensuring patient safety mechanisms. Finally, uh, what, we, what we need to address is investor collaboration and innovative financial support. Major efforts are often required to gain visibility for SMEs, uh, visibility and trust. This matters because of what was mentioned before. The uh, traditional dynamic requires great trust for new solutions to gain ground. Trust and visibility, which ob obviously need to be financially funded as well. I wanted to briefly bring up this OPSI model, describing different innovation facets. Uh, in brief, this model is used for illustrating the innovation portfolio of organizations, highlighting the balance or rather imbalance between different types of innovation projects to support the internal discussion if these strategies that are used, if they actually make sense or they need to be reevaluated. Going from the bottom corner and moving clockwise, these facets can be described as undirected or bottom up, uh, incremental innovation, directed innovation projects or top down or on the right hand side as uncertain or radical innovation. I wanted to bring this up because the drivers affecting innovation that we discussed before can can be considered for driving kind of radical innovation that an enabler of of the radical innovation that we see a lot of that it makes us a lot of sense to go for in this sector. Uh, a digitalization is a good enabler uh, of such a move in the innovation facets model. And this is one reason why specifically ICT tools or concepts are often involved when attempting cross-sectorial approaches. It's not the end product, the ICT tool itself, but, the, but it's often the enabler facilitating actual transformation, for example, within the healthcare service delivery. I think it's time for us to break things up a bit, going from theory to practice, and by doing that by an example. This is a solution that was developed and promoted within the EU project Cross for Health. Uh, I will be telling you more about the project it's itself in a bit. But this solution was developed by Leslie, an entrepreneur here in Sweden developing pedagogical tools with gaming concepts. She found our project and got curious about the opportunities offered. She had an eye on the existing need that she wanted to address, which was namely supporting kids living with obesity in adapting and sustaining a more healthy lifestyle, primarily through promoting active physical activity with an understanding of inherent social stigma and exclusion. For her, this was personal which is nothing else is uh, serve as terrific motivation and a personal drive for her. Through involvement in the project, she gained access to the clinical perspective in dialogue with healthcare staff 
meeting and working with these kids and their families. Furthermore, she teamed up with a Spanish medtech SME and together they developed an immersive uh, augmented reality solution supporting these kids in their daily lives. Today, their mobile solution is available for download on App Store. You see, this is key when identifying collaborative opportunities, allowing approach of any sector and the healthcare sector in particular. For Leslie, this would not have happened if she had not found and matched with a company with specific knowledge in medtech, and especially the regulatory framework controlling the sector. It is a matter of matching your own value chain with the pre-existing knowledge already built up in another company at the latter stage in their respective value chain. The opportunity certainly also needs to make sense from both companies' perspective. To make matters a bit more complex and adding to what we have already discussed, I think that this image illustrates more precisely what we understand the situation to be, at least in reference to the healthcare sector and health technologies. I am sure this also applies to other sectors as well. Due to the heavy, heavily regulated nature of the healthcare sector, it is such an advantage to be familiar with the laws, regulations and also practices controlling it. Of course, it takes time, experience and a great understanding, not only of the purpose of the regulations, but also on how corresponding national and regional reimbursement schemes are arranged. What we experienced in Leslie's case and in similar examples from the same project was the opportunity for solution owners from other sectors to team up with the medtech developers and using the latter's knowledge of laws and regulations and build upon that with their own concepts and designs. In the process, developing hybrid products, drawing on expertise from both backgrounds. Going back to the factors discussed before, we will take a look at two examples trying to break these silos and using these factors in doing so. First off, I'm going to present a procurement in initiative we led together with our public healthcare provider, Region Skåne, since a few years back. This project mostly concerns addressing the five factors highlighted in pink, supporting evolved public procurement practices and increased dialogue between industry and clinical end users. Since innovation in our, in our minds is not only the matter of supporting the development of innovative products and services, it does not end there, but it's, it is also the process of making sure that these products and services are actually implemented, enabling improved public services and achieving effects accordingly. Uh, I think that this example in a good way relates to both sides of that process. Together with our public healthcare provider, Region Skåne, we initiated an innovation procurement process for procuring fall prevention aids. For those of you familiar with procurement, and especially innovation procurement, this process can be described as going all the way from PCP, which is a pre-commercial procurement, to implementation by PPI, which is a finalized procurement, or for that matter, from technological maturity level one or two up to TRL level nine. In this case, what we did was a very premature concept design to what was uh, eventually a product that is under implementation in a clinical ward. So that is what's going to be described now in this example. All right, uh, the general goal of the project was to reduce falls in the clinical ward by at least 20%. The uh, hypothesis was that such falls could be achieved in a variety of ways or even in combination by preventive measures, technological aids, etc. The main concept of the procurement process was for it to be done by developing and publishing requirements based on functionality and effects and not on technical details per se. Uh, I will come back to what we mean that, by that. Uh, not only were we encouraging 
solutions addressing the scenarios that we were describing, but also that we wanted to make sure or promote the opportunity for consortium to be teamed up and um, and um, join in with joint proposals to the procurement. And we also wanted to promote the opportunity not only for traditional medtech companies uh, to uh, to submit proposals, but also for companies from other sectors, which could uh, were, for instance, design companies, interaction design companies from, from the region that we promoted quite heavily. So ordinarily when dealing with traditional types of procurements, uh, requirements are typically, typically published as very technical in nature often to a large extent identical to a technical specification of sought products and services. Most of us can agree that this process does not leave much room for innovative solutions to be procured or implemented in public organization. Uh, what is done and what we did in this project is to instead describe the sought after effects of the procured solutions complemented by and necessary functional requirements. In this particular case, this res resulted in a well-identified scenario making up uh, large parts of the published material. It was not decisive whether it actually was a monitoring device, risk assessment, a management system, or other that was sub submitted as uh, proposals. As long as the providers could reasonably show that their solution would uh, meet the goal of decreasing falls within the clinical ward by 20% or more, they were in competition. This led to a range of different types of solutions being proposed, such as, for instance, intelligent hospital beds detecting irregularities of movement by the patient, uh, systems for human-centric dynamic lightning in the facilities, floor sensors and movement detectors, and uh, risk assessment and monitoring aids integrated with electronic health record systems and local alarm systems. I think that what bears to be mentioned are also the informal results provided by the process. All stakeholders actively participated in the end user dialogue, resulting in a much better understanding of the actual challenge on all sides, as well as a better understanding of the process. Contracts uh, results were awarded in 2018 and is now, after having been developed, uh, being implemented at clinics in Region Skåne. Uh, that might sound like quite some time, uh, being two years since contracts being awarded, uh, but do note that many of these systems are regulated as medical devices, which typically takes about seven to ten years to reach market from, from uh, premature concept idea. Secondly, I'm going to, to present our involvement in the Horizon 2020 project, Cross for Health. Uh, this project mostly concerns addressing the factors highlighted in blue, promoting service innovation concepts in the healthcare sector and addressing development um, market dynamics which is an increased understanding and at times challenging business models connected to public reimbursement systems. And this was done in a variety of ways by increasing clinic and industry collaborations and offering additional financial support for participating SMEs. So Cross for Health, this was a cluster driven project composed of seven different clusters from all over Europe. Its focus and central motivation was to address real healthcare challenges by concepts of challenge-driven innovation, rarely used in public healthcare operations. Products and services were to be offered by international consortiums through cross-sectoral collaborations. What's important here for the results to come out well is to, uh, to strategically select the partners that you want in the project and also the sectors that you want to, the specific sectors that you want to select for 
these cross-sectoral collaborations. That you want them to make sense, basically, and to be natural in, uh, when co-opting. For awarded projects, they in turn received financial support. They received vouchers for acquiring external support, as well as a range of services from consortium experts. This could mean IPR support, business advisory sessions, access to test beds and large scale demonstrators, uh, support in applying for additional public and private financial support and much, much more. Very briefly, results have been overwhelming. In the end of the project, 28 uh, projects were supported, many of which have since then released products on the market related to the support given to them. In total, these SMEs and projects received 3.5 million euros in support through the project. For us, we were especially happy that this sector, the creative industries, had been selected as part of the natural cross-sectoral ambitions. Uh, for us, it's been highly rated since our perception had been that we have uh, quite an active local community curious about extending their services and knowledge base outside of their respective silo. Speaking specifically now of the creative industries in our region and nationally. Not only did we mean that design of products needed to be pretty and easy on the eye, but rather an understanding that there are plenty of knowledge available in creative industries, such as in the, for example, in the gaming community, on understanding what drives engagement, commitment and motivation to follow goals and all else sometimes described as nudging. An accurate understanding of and adherence to personal goals and for instance, recommended lifestyle changes between medical doctor and patient has the potential to provide uh, enormous impact for a sustainable personal health of the individual. Furthermore, design concepts such as co-creation forms and enhancing collaborative design was truly something that we were aspiring for in this, with, this, with selecting this sector. Before we go into presenting some of the products developed during the project, I would like to describe some of the policy and strategic work that were de delivered by the project partners in parallel with the practical work. Surely giving up money to SMEs is always welcome, but uh, it also needs to be done in a very well thought out manner, working strategically to address the structural shortcomings in the markets, the barriers, if you will, uh, and in order to enable companies and the project to make the most of the provided funds. Uh, what you see here before you is parts of the delivered content. Uh, in this case, the business case for collaborating uh, cross-sectorally while addressing societal challenges, such as, for instance, in health and, health and care. Uh, I do not mean, mean to bury you in the details of this contents, but this is to show you that the project logic and the way that we operated actually made sense, not only for the public uh, challenge owner, but also for participating companies and innovation stakeholders engaged in the project. For us, this red line really can be drawn all the way from strategies of the projects, broken down to specific actions and results meaning the direct results of those actions and all the way to long lasting impact of the work being done. Pretty much the same exercise has been done on a range of topics, for instance, related to cluster sustainability and strategies develop, developed by the project, as can be seen here. But um, I, I realize now at this point that we need to need not go further into detail or the theories as to what matters. As mentioned before, regarding factors affecting and driving cross-sectoral collaboration, these are key components to any initiative dealing with this topic. And this is exactly what we did in cross for health as well. Uh, by structuring test beds or living labs and making them accessible for SMEs, by offering cash funding, as well as support in seeking additional financial support after the project, this could, for instance, be a private investment as well as public funding opportunities. 
by setting up platforms that we chose to call uh, open innovation spaces. These were the arena for end users and SMEs, both SMEs from the healthcare sector, as well as SMEs from other sectors, for both parties to better understand the situation and the needs of the end users. <clears throat> In parallel, we raised policy impact goals, as just discussed, and developed white papers on how to make project results more sustainable. So how did we use, uh, do this? Um, it was clear to us that we were going to need to uh, um, communicate with our regional and national clusters mat matured in each of the sectors that we wanted to address. So we got in touch with a lot of these, got, uh, told them about the offering, the opportunities for the SMEs covered by these clusters, clusters and in uh, most ways possible, try to convince them what a great idea it was for, their, for them and for their SMEs to get involved with this project. Uh, what, um, what I'm sure you got a hum about already is that no clusters obviously are alike and what we learned is not only to speak of the opportunity given here but also to be humble in the communication listen to their each of their uh, ambitions and challenges and try to make it fit with what was uh, the ambitions of this project and try and listen understand and speak their their own respective lang language On to uh, another few of the examples of the product products developed within the project. Um, Kin Active is a good example of a, a large of a typical product that was developed through support of the project. It's a uh, Spanish solution developed with Cross for Health support, supporting remote physiotherapy for the patient. This medtech company teamed up with a game studio from Sweden in order to enhance patient adherence, not only to the actual instructed exercises themselves, but also to be able to keep up, keep up with the long-term exercise regimen agreed upon with their healthcare provider. Another good example is uh, the uh, project called Virtual Recovery transformative virtual reali reality for movement and relaxation. This was a collaboration between uh, a Swedish artist called Kreativitetsbanken and a Danish medical doctor. Um, its ambition was to target disabled people that suffer from immobility and children with long-term illness that suffer from immobile condition and inconvenience like pain and stress. What and what could stimulate these two groups to move and to relax? For us, this was an incredible example on the combination of cultural inspiration, applying state-of-the-art techno technologies, and last but not least, with insight into the challenges of the end user. The product was delivered with support both from physiotherapists ensuring relevant postures and movements being implemented in the virtual reality solutions, uh, end users providing feedback on cognitive as well as emotional aspects, and finally the clinical treatment perspective. This product is now under, uh, still on the continued development, I expect it to be released on Steam. So we got, we're getting near, we're getting near to the end. Uh, what's coming next for us is to continue use and continue working with the procurements from our regional healthcare provider, not necessarily promoting innovation procurement per se, but trying to make sure that all procurements can be performed in a, in a bit more innovation friendly way. Uh, for us, it's, uh, it's some additionally a matter of increasing natural interplay between smart specialization strategies and their corresponding strategic innovation programs. And this can be done both nationally and regionally. And we are submitting applications for, uh, for next round of uh, these so-called InnoSoup 
uh, cluster facilitated cross-sectorial projects by Horizon 2020. One such submission that I, I wanted to bring up was our upcoming, at least we hope, in a sub-project addressing health and healthcare challenges by cross-sectoral collaboration. Just as in cross for health a number of sectors have been pre-selected, but one thing we found was that these can be quite interchangeable and companies are rarely defined within just one sector, at least anymore. Furthermore, from our experience in cross for health we can easily see that co-creation concepts and human-centric design adds real value to solutions. All this meaning we very much look forward to continue working with creative concepts and industries going forward. So uh, we've been, I've been introducing us at Innovation Skåne. We have been discussion, discussing the whys and the hows, the mechanism around cross-sectoral collaborations, uh, fo focusing a bit, a bit on public policy and strategies as well. I have presented uh, briefly a few examples that we've been involved in, involved in procurement initiatives, policy works, and uh, examples of actually developed projects, and a uh, few words in, about the future as well. So that was it for me. Um, thank you very much for listening. You can all reach me at the email address uh, mentioned here.